So I think, you know, what is fact is that the gut microbiome is key in allergy prevention and allergy man management. I think the other fact is that we do not know what to manipulate and we do not know how to manipulate it. Um, I have literally just been talking to somebody who's looking at how particular uh, strains of microbiota can change epigenetics. So we do know that the gut microbiome is central in modulating whatever is going on in the immune system and that the gut microbiome produces short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate which regulates or upregulates T regulatory cells which sort of like just calm down the immune system. So we know it's key. We know there's a difference in gut microbiome between children with food allergies and without food allergies. We know there's a difference in the gut microbiome between children who remain food allergic and those who develop tolerance. But if you, for example, look at studies from Saudi Arabia versus studies from New York, um, and you look at calcium allergic children, then the allergic kids from Mount Sinai or from New York, it was actually a multi-center study from across the United States, although the, it was a Mount Sinai team who presented the data, is very different from the calcium allergic kids in Saudi Arabia. So we're just not at the point where we can say that is the bug or that is the strain that we need to fix. So I think we, it's exciting times, um, but we're still trying to decipher exactly what we need to do. If what you're asking is whether we perhaps need to look at dietary patterns when we do OIT, yes, of course. I have just spoken to Brian Vickery and I said to him, Brian, if you ever need somebody to monitor what else the patients are eating while you're doing this oral immunotherapy trial, I'm in. And, and I do think, um, you know, perhaps we could explain why some people um, improve on an oral immunotherapy treatment and others don't because their underlying diet is different. We see see um, a lot of serious adverse reactions when they do milk or oral immunotherapy in Japan. Now it could be genetics, it could be a million other reasons, but it may just be because the underlying diet in Japan is so very different from what we see in Canada, where they do a lot of milk immunotherapy, therapy, but they don't seem to see the severe reactions that, that they find in Japan. So, so I definitely think underlying diet, diet patterns, and perhaps the um, opportunity of, of the diet to modulate the gut microbiome in particular is, is important to study, even in the oral immunotherapy trials.